rhythm is an important aspect of uh, language, right? Um, you, you may remember your study of poetry, uh, because within poetry, we are particularly concerned with the analysis of uh, rhythms and rhymings, okay? Um, what happens is basically that um, the language is carrying rhythm, and that rhythm is really important. Uh, you know, uh, when, when we, as an expert, analyze language, then we would know that this rhythm is found everywhere, specifically in terms of language. Like, uh, uh, if you just uh, remember the opening lines of uh, Macbeth, right? Uh, in Macbeth, the witches, they say that, uh, when shall we three meet again, in thunder, lightning, or in the rain, when the hurly-burly is done, when the war is lost and won. So you see, these lines are very much rhythmic. And that's an aspect of poetry. But even within um, everyday conversation, within uh, informal language, we also maintain this rhythm. And um, as a linguist, as a, a phonetician or a phonologist, we must know how to analyze that rhythm. But right now the point is that how to realize that rhythm uh, within connected speech and then also within transcription. Right? So that rhythm is an important point. All right. Um, language is rhythmic. And at times it could be unrhythmic or it may not be maintaining rhythm. Like when, when someone is nervous, right? Or when someone is uh, staggering, then it may not be uh, giving us rhythm. We may not be able to see that rhythm. But in normal speech, right? Uh, or uh, uh, in more common words, in, in a confident speech, uh, we are all the time having rhythm, right? So uh, that is a noticeable event at regular intervals, basically, right? So that is rhythm. Noticeable events which are taking place uh, at regular intervals, right? Um, you know, there are rhythms, like the heartbeat is rhythmic. If you just listen to your heartbeat, then you would know that this very much rhythmic. Or maybe the flashing of light okay, with regular interval, right? So that regular interval, which is showing you the flashlight, that is also rhythmic, or it may be like the piece of music. When you listen to music, there are regular intervals, right? The drum beat, or maybe the symphony. So these are regular intervals and um, the examples for rhythm. All right. English speech is supposed to be very rhythmical, right? Uh, it is said that English language is, uh, you know, stress time language, so the rhythm is very much, uh, you know, visible. Um, there is an example, 20, 20, okay? Two syllables are there. So which one is, you know, strong and which one is weak? 20, right? Then 20 places, so now two words and four syllables. 20 places, then 20 places further, 20 places further, right? Three words and six syllables. Then the seven syllable is also there now. 20 places further back, 20 places further back. So what is happening there, basically? So that's an analysis of uh, rhythm, that when is the stressed syllable put, right? If you remember your uh, poetry classes, maybe as a student of uh, English, you might have studied that, that how the uh, cataphoric and anaphoric analyses were done by your poetry teachers, right? So what was that, basically? That was the location of, or maybe the placement of a stressed syllable in a line, okay? So that's actually the analysis of rhythm, right? Um, there are two types of languages on the basis of uh, rhythm. One, stress time languages. And the major example is English, right? Although there are um, many other languages as well. Uh, in stress time languages, the stress is put with regular intervals. Maybe like uh, every second is, uh, every second syllable is stressed, maybe. Or it may be uh, the order of uh, um, the language uh, at words level that every second last syllable is stressed, right? So that... Uh, may be the case, okay? So it could be any case of uh, any order, but the order is a must, that there is some order, there is a specific interval, 
which is followed by that language. And other languages which follow this uh, stress time pattern or phenomenon, these are Russians and Arabic also, right? And the second type of uh, uh, languages, uh, which is uh, called the syllable time languages, right? Syllable time, uh, opposite to uh, stress time languages. In syllable time languages, all syllables, whether um, stressed or unstressed, whether uh, strong or weak, those uh, syllables, they tend to occur at regular intervals, right? Regular intervals like equal time is there, okay? So, uh, like, uh, maybe that all syllables are neutral, maybe that all syllables are stress, maybe that all syllables are unstressed, right? So, that could be uh, the case like equal time is given, right? Equal time is given to uh, all syllables, equal time is given, right? One syllable is not made prominent like that of the case of English, right? And such languages include French, Telugu, or Yoruba. And the syllables, they receive more or less the same stress. Each syllable, all syllables, they receive more or less the same stress, more or less the same duration is there, and more or less their the quality of syllables are the same. So those languages are called uh, syllable time languages. Um, that's the difference which is made by phonologists, but yes, we, we can question uh, that whether uh, very, you know, uh, pure syllable time languages, whether they exist or not. But these are the differences which are given by phoneticians, right? And as the students of phonetics and phonology, we must know how to realize this pattern of, uh, you know, uh, stress within uh, words and then that patterns of uh, stress at sentence level, which is called rhythm. So that the understanding of that rhythm is important for the students of phonetics and phonology and then also to realize those uh, rhythmic differences within transcription. That's an important point.